Like I think a, mm. a, an idea like this creates the opportunity or a safe place for people to work things out in more than one way than just bothering. Right. At least take a yeah. second, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. a lot of times that's all you need to be like, make the decision not to do something. True. And then the idea of it itself, you also had to bring it to light is the fact that we have to be this creative Mm -hmm. to create a space where we can reduce gun violence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Good point. Like, yeah. we got to go to the extremes to say, all right, the best case scenario mm -hmm. to prevent gun violence is for y'all to still conduct violence. Mm -hmm. and but not deadly violence. But not deadly violence. Deadly violence yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, mm -hmm. one of the things that, and, and I'd love it, too, because it does, it, it has shown that we as a community and people as a community are willing to do whatever it takes to reduce the violence in the community. Or in the neighborhoods and one of the things that i know some schools in baltimore at least one of them particularly did is that they incorporated mindfulness and meditation instead of detention mm. which was well wow. needed because it reduced mm. like statistically speaking like the the actual the, the outcome showed like a good 90 plus percent 99 of the students that were usually in detention were not Mm. Because they learned while the time they were in quote unquote detention, it was it was, it was meditation. Now, mm. how to manage, how to cope with with anger, how to cope with certain stress and anxiety, how to right. manage their emotions a lot better, express it in a healthy way. Right. So, like, I love the fact that what the city's doing. I love that. I love the creativity and the necessity of like being different for the sake of like reaching out to people that you have to be different to 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 teach them how to how to learn something like that. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell them right from wrong, the the, the way that. You know, cookie cut away. You gotta mm, be yeah. creative. Yeah, and, yeah. It, and it opens up room for for passion, man. Because I feel like that's that's one of the main things that our community lacks: avenues for passion. So mm. when you think about like different, like I just think about all the different just wild activities that I see people doing, like mountain climbing, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that's just you know random stuff that people make money behind mm -hmm. that our community just doesn't get involved in. You feel me? And um. I feel like any avenue to where some like a kid could try something and figure out that he likes it, like I could just imagine like how many people are like, oh, I kind of like this boxing thing, right. and kind of mm -hmm. take it serious. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you probably wouldn't have never found out had it not been so. I feel like anything, dog, like boxing, fencing, um, any any form right. of badminton. activity, competition, that, really, badminton yeah. that somebody could potentially form a passion for. Yeah, but, we, but we got to normalize and model it because mm -hmm. like the normalcy for for kids especially kids of color is like rapping and basketball and football like that's yeah. it you know what i'm saying and, yeah. I'm, and I'm, exactly dealing with, I, yeah, I'm dealing with kids that, that think they're going to be that think they're going to basketball i tell them straight up guys you suck y'all need to think of a backup plan it's okay to have a backup plan because that backup plan might be the the thing that really puts money in your in your pocket mm -hmm. you might you might go pro you mm -hmm. might get it you might only be there for a year word you know even, what i'm saying because not even because sometimes i don't really like to bring up the backup plan i like to be like you know sometimes your passions change you, right not sure you, you might not want to play basketball forever because mm -hmm. that's in, in, when you really think about it an athlete's life is like you know what I'm saying? You're just putting your body through all this sure. all this stuff. And there are people who make a lot more money putting a lot less stress on their bodies. You know what right. I mean? Absolutely. Like, or just happier. Happier, happier yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You but, know what I mean? And yeah. even with sports, with something that starts in adolescence and childhood, mm -hmm. your, your frontal lobe isn't fully developed. As you grow, you might realize, oh, I don't like this as much as I used to, mm -hmm. no matter how good you get at it. Mm -hmm. you, might find, you might find that intellectual or that uh that uh that other you know alternative interest mm -hmm. and you know so right yeah no, 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 exactly. in, but yeah like i definitely think that's a point that you know we a lot of times adults do push their passions on their children too yeah mm -hmm. and there's not enough of an outlet or safe place safe space for them to express what their passions are mm -hmm. as they develop right so they just think oh well my, you know my dad my mom says this is the way to go because i'm so good at it anyway i'm just gonna stay there mm -hmm. and then you you know you have a quarter life crisis like yeah, right. no, yeah. yeah. Man, but we have to we have to normalize diversity in what we like and our mm -hmm. passions like it yeah. can't be just these three things like you know what i'm saying like I love, I love taking pictures now. Like photography is a hobby of mine that I definitely love picking up. It's okay to do that you, mm -hmm. if you got a talent. You know, what I mean, don't feel ashamed for it. And I think that's the thing. Like a lot of these kids are probably really, really want to do a lot of things that will probably down it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's whack. That's gay. That sounds stupid. I'm like, mm -hmm. nah, bro. Like if you sing, you dance, you, mm -hmm. you're freaking good at chess, dog. Like milk your talents. Cause you gonna get older, and all these people that were talking down about it are not gonna be here no more. You are gonna mm -hmm. look back like, damn, yo. 
I really could have been doing this. I could have been playing viola. I've been playing viola. I played viola since the fourth grade and I stopped in high school because my dumb ass thought mm. it just wasn't a cool thing to do. Mm. And I was like one or two only viola players in there. Mm. Yeah, so, I could have been, bro. And we, we even had conversations about that. You know what I mean? It's like how much, how much of exactly that, you know, that dream get, that's crushed by just out, the outside influence. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and and definitely, it's important to have these other outlets as we're expressing because you know you might even find yourself where your outlet, and I'll make it personal, where my outlet just kind of kept me out of trouble. I got into skateboarding, which at the time in the early '90s, no one else being black in North Miami Beach, um, and then shout out, um, three hundred five up. <laughs> no one else was really doing that from back the zoo. Then. From the day hey, I've stayed in the zoo for just a little bit. Shout out Carroll City too, but um. I definitely found myself in skateboarding because I was around, like, you know, my, my dad was living in California and I had family out there as a kid. And, you know, seeing that so much, I found an interest in it. I started skateboarding at like four. And I was like the only kid in the neighborhood skateboarding. So black dude always getting made fun of or whatever, even though I was friends with everybody at the same time. And, but that kept me, like, I would go to school the next day because I was skateboarding at home. I go to school the next day, you're like, yo, man, this gang was just chasing us with some bats and nines yesterday. Where were you at? Oh, I was up on skateboarding. skateboarding. Like, it was a regular <laughs> thing for me where I realized, like, because all day I'm thinking about going home to skate. Mm. <clears throat> and so that that's just an example because even being in the wrong place at the wrong, wrong time, like the Central Park Five, 